return to Bulletproof on Modern Marvels. From celebrity footballers to heads of state, the Bulletproof car is today's ultimate status symbol. On the street, it's the first line of defense in an attack. Over the last 70 years, it's been modified and perfected with lessons learned, often the hard way. Had the roof been armored, I believe we would have all survived the assassination. The news is full of frightening scenarios conjured by one-word headlines. Ambushes, attacks, kidnappings, hostages, ransoms. Since the 1970s, the rise in terrorism has forced executives, celebrities, and dignitaries to make their cars safe for travel. This has created a lucrative niche for those in the business of providing armor-proofing materials. Texas Armoring in San Antonio, Texas, fortifies passenger vehicles for a range of situations and threat levels around the world. In the United States, the market is growing fast. Most of the clients in the United States have been political figures or religious leaders. As always, balancing protection against mobility is the critical challenge. How to armor a car against heavy gunfire and still have it drive with the ease and maneuverability of a regular car? You are adding 1,500 or 2,000 pounds to a vehicle. This is a state-of-the-art bulletproof car. Its armor can resist handguns, assault rifles, and even armor-piercing rounds. The engine can be started remotely to protect from car bombs. It's the security vehicle of choice for passengers under threat. With new security accessories that can now save lives, engineers needed to find a lightweight alternative to steel. In the 1970s, they found the material they were looking for. It was called Kevlar and made from tightly woven man-made fibers. Richard Davis, a maverick inventor, pioneered Kevlar as a body armor and had a novel way of testing it too. Car companies took notice. Armorers today are always searching for lightweight materials to lessen the load. SpectraShield, a new super light ballistics material, is used in the doors of the vehicles. Similar to Kevlar, SpectraShield has multiple layers and is pressed with a resin to form a hard bullet resistant panel. To armor the door, we would take off the interior door panel and then put SpectraShield into the door. And then when there's not a space where the SpectraShield can fit because of the thickness of the SpectraShield, we would replace it with ballistic steel. Then we would replace the uh, door panel and all the wiring basically stays the same. Then the window would be placed in and it would be fixed. We were driving down a hill. I, I heard a sound. It sounded like a loud clap. Um, I, I thought we'd been hit by a rocket. Uh, I turned out that I, I was wrong. We were, uh, we'd driven over an anti-tank mine. Fortunately for John, he was driving an armored car with the latest high-tech welding. There is no doubt that if I had not been in an armored vehicle, if I'd had a similar type of mine strike, I would have died. When we armor a vehicle, the, the entire passenger compartment, which is the whole cabin area of the vehicle, will be protected, as well as the gas tank, the battery, the radiator, which would allow a vehicle more time to get out of the situation. The floor and ceiling of the cab is lined with thick ballistic nylon. The high hardened steel is the material we use in the firewall and in the pillars and posts, everywhere that needs to be protected against direct hits of high-power rifle. Bulletproof windows are made with normal glass, and the bullet is defeated by sheer mass. To make the glass tougher, you simply add more. Stopping the bullet was not the issue. In fact, this test shows that a 44 Magnum can be defeated by glass only a few inches thick. Ah. The glass has stopped the bullet, but as this footage shows, shards of glass fly out the back of the bulletproof glass and into the car's interior. This is called spalling, and it tears the skin to shreds. 
In the 1970s, designers finally sold this by layering normal glass with sheets of plastic, polycarbonate. This gives the windscreen an inner coating to catch shards or spalling that may fly inside the vehicle. The result? No penetration and no spalling. While glass has traditionally been the Achilles heel of the bulletproof car, with the best armor in the world and the most sophisticated glass, cars need to move quickly to get out of the kill zone. From run flat tires to smoke dispenser, the way they do this is with security accessories. Extras on an armored car is not a new idea. Al Capone had a siren. And today, security accessories complement the armor of a bulletproof car. In the event of a car chase, a smoke dispenser can come in very handy. When finished, these cars look as if they're straight off the showroom floor. But they're as safe a fortress as the armored truck. An attacker would not be able to tell that the vehicle is armored. A bulletproof car isn't invincible. But what it gives you is something that may save your life. Time.